Hello, my name is Mike Rayner and this video is about how to install Ubuntu 14.04 long-term support desktop into VirtualBox. Where Ubuntu comes from. Ubuntu is an open source operating system based on Debian Linux. The word Ubuntu comes from the Zulu language. Archbishop Desmond Tutu from South Africa explained it this way. One of the sayings in our country is Ubuntu, the essence of being human. Ubuntu speaks to the fact that you can't exist as a human being in isolation. It speaks about interconnectedness. You can't be human all by yourself and when you have this quality, Ubuntu, you are known for your generosity. Mark Shuttlesworth from South Africa started the Ubuntu Foundation and began distributing the Ubuntu operating systems I believe it was around 2004. Outcomes, download Ubuntu 14.04, create a virtual guest and virtual box for Ubuntu 14.04, install Ubuntu 14.04, update and upgrade, you've got to get all the latest updates for Ubuntu 14.04, install the guest editions so that virtual box will play nicely with Ubuntu, and finally, install a dynamic kernel module support for VirtualBox. This is installed in case the Linux kernel is ever updated. Then VirtualBox will play nicely with the new kernel. And then configure Ubuntu 14.04 for smaller icons so you can see the menus in the Windows title bar and some improved privacy protection. Requirements would be a host computer with administrative privileges an internet connection, VirtualBox 4.3.12, that version has better 3D support, and enough RAM, random access memory, and storage to run both host and guest computers. Here's some additional info that you can use if you want some more information about Ubuntu. And disclaimer, while I've researched this material, I can't fully verify that will work with all combinations of hardware and software out there. So I've included a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop the video and read the disclaimer. Here I am at www.ubuntu.com and what I'm going to do here is download the operating system for the virtual machine. I'm going to create the desktop, the virtual desktop for Ubuntu. Go to download Ubuntu. Takes you to a different page and then it says Ubuntu desktop. And you've got some other choices here like server or cloud, but I'm picking desktop this time. Now there are three choices here for desktop. 64-bit if you've got a 64-bit machine. 32-bit for machines with less than 2 gigabyte of RAM. RAM is random access memory or the memory disappears when you turn off your machine and a 64-bit uh, Macintosh. And I'm going to pick 32-bit for machines with less than 2 gigabyte of RAM. And then click on download. You may have another choice, of course. And it takes you to a page where it asks you to donate some money. Uh, this case, I'm going to say not now. Take me to the download. And you get a message that says, thank you for downloading Ubuntu Desktop. And what I have to do is save the file, click OK, and I'm going to pick a place where I can find the file. In my case, it's computer, local disk C, downloads, Ubuntu, and I'm going to click on that. And then Ubuntu 14.04 desktop. You've got your own choice, however you set yours up on your computer, but you have to be able to find this file at a future time. And then simply click Save. Now you notice right here it says about 11 minutes for the download. I'll come back when it's fully downloaded. Here I have about 7 seconds left. See with the arrow it's downloaded. So if you want to verify that it has been downloaded, you'd have to go back to your, wherever you have downloaded. In my case it's local disk C, downloads, Ubuntu, Ubuntu 14.04 desktop and there it is. Next step is create a virtual guest for this download. 
In this section, I'm going to create a virtual guest inside of VirtualBox to install the operating system that I've just recently downloaded. So I go up here where it says New, and I'm going to give it a name. In this case, I'm going to call it Desk, DSK, Desk, Ubuntu, Trusty Tar 01. In Linux operating system, and I'm going to choose Ubuntu 32 bit. Now it's very important that whatever you downloaded, that you make sure if you download a 32 bit, you've got a 32 bit here. If you download 64 bit, you've got a 64 bit here. You may have a computer that doesn't show 64 bit, but that's another issue. It could be something like you don't have a 64-bit computer or you don't have what they call hardware virtualization. But I've got a 32-bit. Click Next. And it says 512 megabytes minimum memory. Now I found inside of VirtualBox that 512 megabytes really doesn't work very well for 14.04. So I'm going to put in double that and put in 1024. If you want to run in a machine with 512 megabytes of memory, that's what this MB stands for, I would suggest you download Lubuntu or Xubuntu. They don't require as much memory as Ubuntu. Click Next and we'll create a virtual hard drive now. Create and we'll take the default, Next, and dynamically allocated. Basically dynamically allocated uses less space on your hard drive the fix size is a little bit quicker, but all the empty space for your virtual guest is taken up on your hard drive. Click Next. And I like to give it about 20 gigabytes of memory. 8 is really not enough once you start doing some things or actually uh, trying to get some things done or having some fun with your virtual guest. Uh, 8 gigabytes, it seems to run out of uh, storage space. Now you can expand it, but you have to use a command line for that. Click Create. And here it is. This Ubuntu TT01. Now we're not done yet with this creation. Here's our virtual machine that I've created, but I still have to do some additional things to it. Click on System. And I like to enable I.O. APEC. Basically, this allows the machine to shut down cleanly in case there are some problems or helps that way. And sometimes with VirtualBox, you do have some problems shutting down your machine. I'm going to click, select that. Then I'm going to go to Processor. If you have 32-bit Ubuntu downloaded, you've got to make sure that this is checked. If you have 64-bit Ubuntu, it should not be checked. So blank for 64-bit checked for 32-bit Ubuntu. And you, if you've got more than one CPU, that's up to you if you want to choose let it have more than one CPU. And here where it says acceleration, this two items being checked means that you've got hardware virtualization enabled on your computer. So I'm going to click OK. So the next thing I'm going to go over to display and I want to enable the 3D acceleration. This is for Ubuntu. And I like to give it as much video memory as possible, which in this case would be 128 megabytes of RAM. I don't know if this actually helps or not, but with the 3D desktop, but giving it as much as possible seems to make it work a little bit smoother, at least for me, with my hardware configuration. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to storage where you see this little empty CD DVD this is where you're going to have to pick your ISO file that was downloaded ISO file that you downloaded to your directly into here and you can use live CD DVD if you want to you know play around with it before you actually do the install and see what's going on or not I just normally check it and then I go right here choose a virtual CD DVD disk file and up comes your chooser or in this case it in my case it's Windows Explorer if you're using a different operating system it'll be something else and you go to where you downloaded 
your desktop file. Make sure it's highlighted and then click open. So now I'm ready to go ahead and actually install Ubuntu 14.04 desktop and that'll be on the next section. Now that the virtual guest is created and everything is configured to install the operating system, simply go to Diskbuntu TT01 or where, whatever you've named your virtual guest for Ubuntu desktop, right click and click on start. Up comes a window saying VirtualBox is running in about a minute or two. Here finally after about a minute and a half in my case we've got two choices. If you have checked that live CD DVD you could try Ubuntu here but I'm simply going to go install Ubuntu into my virtual guest. It's going to be as a virtual guest and it says best results. You got 6.3 gigabytes if you recall. We've got 20 or I have 20. It's connected to the internet. Maybe I should have pointed that out during the virtual guest but there's a default setting for the internet that works and I'm also going to click download updates while installing and install this third-party software and I'll simply click continue and you'll find this is a fairly easy install just follow along next screen says computer currently has no detected operating system that should be true for your virtual guest and so I'm going to erase a disk and install Ubuntu and you've got some other choices here, but for a basic 32-bit install, or if you're using a 64-bit install, it, it would be the same. I'm going to click Install Now. And ask where you are, that your time zone. In my case, I'm in the Eastern United States time zone. I'm going to click Continue. should be able to find this for you if you're connected to the Internet. And the keyboard layout. Now where it says detect keyboard layout, unless you've got some kind of strange keyboard, I'm just going to, in my case, I'm going to leave it English US and English US. You may have to change this to the keyboard layout for your country or your area of the world. Click continue. One thing, if you do not get this keyboard layout matched up with your keyboard, it's going to present some problems. Now it asks for your name. In my case, I'm going to use Mike. And then I'm going to put the computer's name. But this computer's name should be in uh, lower case. Disk Ubuntu TT01. I'm going to keep it the same, but it doesn't have to be the same as the virtual box name that we created. Username. Again, you can change this. And a password. Now when you create a password, what you should do is use upper and lower case letters, a number, and a special character like a dollar or a pound sign. Now I have a weak password here because I create hundreds of virtual machines and I need something I can type easily but I also want to have a password that I require my password login so that when I show or demonstrate something that this always comes up. Once you've got this set with a strong password, if you recall I Set upper and lower case letters, at least eight characters. It would be nice if it was longer. A number and a special symbol like star or a dollar sign or something like that. Click continue. And now it's going to go install. It takes maybe half an hour to do this. And during the install, what you can do is you can look through a slideshow. And that was a trusty tar, which is... I guess some kind of goat. So you've got all kinds of software from the Ubuntu Software Center. I think there's about 40, well I know there's over 40,000 different pieces of software you can get and most of it's free. And you can search in science, education, or games or certain categories. 
and it's fairly easy to download. In music, this case, Ubuntu comes with Rhythm Box music player, so you can play some music. And then you've got photos, and you've got the Shotwell photo manager. You can also use GIMP, which is a common in the Linux world. It has a little bit stranger menu than, uh, say, something like Photoshop. It will do the job. And then you've got your Firefox web browser. And if you want, you can also install your Chrome, Chromium or Chrome web browser. And LibreOffice, and then you've got Writer, Calc, which is like Excel, Impress, which is like PowerPoint. And there's also some other ones that you can download, like a database one. And I'm not sure, but I think there may even be a project-based one. And you've got some access settings. At the end of this video, I'm actually going to do some settings to show you how to make some changes here on the appearance. And that's it for the slideshow. Now, if you notice, it says installing system. Anytime a screen comes up, I will uh, come back to the video. In the meantime, I'm going to fast forward this so you don't have to watch that little spinning ball. Here it says, installation is complete. You need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. We'll click on restart now. It says, please remove installation media and close the tray if any, then press enter. Since we're using ISO files, let's simply press enter and see what happens. And there we go. We'll have to do some configurations before we actually get to use Ubuntu, but your virtual guest now has an operating system installed. Here I am back at the Ubuntu desktop. I'm going to have to enter the password that I've created. Hit enter. Now you notice that's got kind of a little screen, but don't worry, we're going to get that all fixed. Notice that we've got kind of large menu items in this little screen. The first thing that I'm going to configure right now is the software updates. And you would simply say software updater. If you notice that it comes up, you've got software and updates. We'll just go to the software updater. Click on that. And checks for updates. And it says update software 63 megabytes of it will be downloaded. Click on install now. And ask for your password or authentication. Click enter that and hit enter or authenticate. And it's going to go around and install these software updates. Now, I'm not going to watch this little bar go across when everything's installed or the next screen you have to make a decision and come back then. And now it says computer needs to restart to finish installing update. So let's go ahead and restart it now. Click on the shutdown button. Okay, so now it's off. There's one thing that this is the easiest place to do it is to remove the ISO file so that you can install VirtualBox Guest Editions a little bit easier. So let's go to Storage. Make sure, of course, that you have Disk Ubuntu T01 or which, whatever the name of your virtual guest is. And then go to Storage. Select the ISO file, and then go over here and just, and in my case it's host drive D, make sure that there's it's empty. Or you can simply have removed disk from virtual drive. I normally like to set it to D, whichever way you want to do. But make sure this is empty. Click OK. And so now you're ready to go on to the next step. In this section, I'm going to install VirtualBox Guest Editions, and we'll get the screen 
or actually the desktop so it will fill the whole screen and not look so small. So right click on again and start if you haven't started it yet. Go ahead and enter your password. So now let's go up here to the virtual box menu and go in where it says devices and insert guest edition CD image. And because we've got this small screen, let's move this over here so that you can click on the run button and you've got your authentication this is your password and then click on authenticate this will take two or three minutes to install also but once we restart it after this is installed you should be able to fill the whole screen and you won't have this small screen anymore After VirtualBox is installed, hit return. What I'm going to do now is go and do another restart. Shut down. And click right here where it says restart. So now you notice that the screen has in size has increased. Enter my password. Hit enter. So now we've got Ubuntu 14.04 desktop running. Go over here where it says view and I'll say auto size guest display. And sometimes I have to do this twice. I don't know why, but let's hit it twice. In my case, it didn't increase in size. I must not be at the largest. So I'm going to go to maximize and now it will cover the whole screen. So now I have the desktop running. In the next section I'm going to do some configuration settings. Okay, here's the Ubuntu desktop after installing virtual guest editions. Now there's a few configurations I like to do before using the desktop. One of them is I like to install dynamic kernel module support. Which basically what that does it makes VirtualBox play nicely when you get an update. I'm in the dash and I'm going to type in the terminal, not the R. Terminal. And you have to go to terminal to do this. Now you notice you've got some other suggestions that are coming up down here, the weather channel and stuff like this and network stuff and they're trying to sell you stuff. I'm going to show you how to get rid of that in a second here. So I put, select a terminal, and I use sudo, which brings me into administrative privileges, apt get install dkms, add your password, and in a while, second it says, do you want to continue, put in a Y for yes and it's going to install it. It's fully installed. Remember this is just for VirtualBox users so I'm just going to close the terminal and the next thing I'm going to do is go over here to settings and make some settings here and the first one is security and privacy and could click on search and says when searching in the dash include online search results. I'm just going to click off on this, make sure that's off. So when I search up in the dash I don't get all these online stuff and the information goes to online providers. Also on the setting on appearance I'm going to do two things here. One is I'm going to make the icon smaller Actually, let me move this over here so you can kind of see that. And just move this. Icons will decrease in size. I'm going to stop at about 32. You can pick your own size. 
And the other thing I'm going to do on the behavior is I'm going to show the menus for window in the Windows title bar. I prefer to do that rather than have it be up here at the top. So now once that's done, I'll just simply close it and I'm ready to go use Ubuntu. And that's pretty much it for the install and setting it up in VirtualBox. Thank you.